think as musicians, one always wants to tell a story and to find characters. And actually part of the idea of doing this was to allow the students to tell a story. Because we've spent some time really thinking about those characters and really embodying them and trying to get the musicians to move with a sort of attitude, we call it movement. They're presenting something in their bodies and not just playing the notes. That their storytelling is much clearer so that they can kind of really feel that the fierce winds or the ice cracking or the warmth of a fire. Musicians are people who move for a living. Everything we do is movement. You're tapped into that idea of like constant movement. Where do you place the force? Where does it come from in the body? What's powerful about this is that it forces people out of their complacency with that and makes them rethink what their relationship is to their own body, moving within music, and it encourages the audiences to see that as well. In classical performance, there's very much a fourth wall in that the audience is often somewhat separated from the action that's going on on stage. And here, I think that we've tried our best to really bring them into the story and dramatize it and really, really make it quite descriptive. I think it's as immersive of an experience you will get from a classical performance of Vivaldi. <laughs> These two pieces, they speak to each other. The four seasons being where the four seasons have clarity. There is spring, there is summer, there is autumn, there is winter, when we're moving cyclically through them. And that is a healthy way that our planet should be in relationship with itself and when everything's working well and in balance, in seasonal balance, ecological balance. Holly's piece is, is imagining a future where that has broken down and the melting shifting world is where the seasons are beginning to fragment and, and come apart. It's trying to um, put those two things in juxtaposition and, and let those two pieces speak to each other to, to consider what our future might be. Are we losing the seasons? Are we coming into a much more chaotic world? headset you are wearing sends sounds via micro vibrations through your cheekbones and to your cochlea, leaving your ears free and unplugged to hear the environment around you. The best experiences I've had with art are experiences that have not entirely been uh, easy from A to Z. Experiencing basically all the ups and downs, let's say all 88 uh, keys on a piano in terms of emotion. And they're not all easy, some of them are difficult, but those are the most valuable concert experiences I have. Please feel free to explore the space as the piece unfolds. The piece is immersive, it re-spatializes the performers and the audience are invited to kind of position themselves in and amongst the players and the sound sources so they can have a kind of a playful listening experience where they can be free to move around and change their focus between the live sounds that are in the room and the sounds that are also delivered via the headsets. It incorporates Arctic field ice recordings by Chris Watson and while it's quite an abstract concept to sonify data, um, I knew that when I was taking the temperature data of the oceans that using that to make sound would kind of generate a very, very slowly, upwardly rising tone. There's an element to this piece which is quite, it's quite mournful in the fact that it's almost the environment crying out for help. There's a real sense, I think, of grief in the music. The juxtaposition of these two pieces, I hope, sort of shows what we're doing to the planet and that, you know, we are changing these seasons. I have to give credit to Nick for the um, curation and the juxtaposition of the two pieces and also the kind of narrative about melting shifting being a future world. I would say that it's more about looking at current climate issues 
and reflecting on the problems that are actually happening now. To me, it's clear that central to the solution lies a circular economy, and that's possibly also the only solution. And what that means is to mimic nature and its inherent ability for being sustainable. Nature only takes what it needs, and that's what uh, human beings need to learn to do. The purpose of the piece was not to finger wag at individuals within the audience, but to create something with a group of other artists and contributors which would stimulate discussion and thought around the topic. In order for the necessary level of change to happen, it needs to come from government and policy and from big business policy. Can we do this and can we do it quickly enough? I don't know.